Well, there's no end in sight to Washington, Moscow tensions over Ukraine. U.S. President Joe Biden reiterates his country's support for Ukraine in case of any Russian invasion on the country. According to the White House press secretary, Biden made the pledge during a phone call with his Ukrainian counterpart Volodymyr Zelensky. The U.S. president said Washington and its allies would, quote, respond decisively if Russia moves to invade Ukraine. That is days after Biden held a second conversation in a month with Russian President Vladimir Putin amid tensions on the Russian-Ukrainian border. The U.S.-led NATO military alliance claims Moscow is building up troops on its border with the intention to attack Ukraine. Moscow denies the allegation, saying its troop movement is aimed at securing own territories. On that story, I'm going to bring in Mr. Jason Andre. He's a political commentator who joins us via Skype out of uh, Niagara Falls, where time is uh, just past 9 p.m. Many, many thanks uh, for uh, joining this broadcast, Mr. Androha. Tell me what you think about the piece that I just read. Uh, do you see a serious threat really brewing here, or is it, uh, at least for now, a war of words? I think for now, this is definitely a war of wars. Uh, essentially, what we have is a situation where there are areas of Ukraine that have decided to split off. Once there was what is essentially a Nazi coup inside of the country and fascists took power, these uh, two areas, which are predominantly Russian, did decide to break off. They had a vote to uh, rejoin uh, uh, Russia, to, to separate, etc. Now, their breaking off is something that the United States, or specifically the proxy forces inside of Ukraine, uh, cannot afford to have happen. So essentially, we have a situation where these break off provinces have requested uh, Russian help because they are also ethnic Russians to defend them in case they get invaded. So the, uh, the uh, Russian forces are about 200 kilometers from the border with uh, Ukraine. While the United States is seeing this as a justification to send NATO forces into the country. But essentially what we have here is a situation where Russia is not going to go in and do anything unless the unless NATO goes in and tries to force those areas to come back to the country. So the ball in this situation is certainly in the U.S. court. But what they're trying to frame this as is that uh, Putin has, has built up the army next to Ukraine to take it over because uh, Putin's bad or w whatever reason that it is that they're throwing out into the media, when really Putin is there at the request of the separatist forces inside the country. But of course, it is also in Russian interest to at least uh, partially be a part somewhat of Ukraine because Ukraine has always been a very a very central point in what has been a longstanding history of uh, aggression between the East and the West. Uh, many past wars that were East and West, you know, one of their main, main focal points was Ukraine, given its uh, geographical position. So in, in that aspect, it's very important to Russia. And uh, Jason, what do you think, in what direction are we headed? You know, uh, sometimes it more and more reminds me of what happened in Georgia about 10 years ago. And you know, the, 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 the support that the Western Bloc was actually, was supposed to or was thought to be given to uh, to uh, President Saakashvili back then. Do you see the same scenario, perhaps if things really get that serious, do you see the same scenario playing a role here? I, I think this could, like any you know military buildup, can explode into something much greater and very, very costly in terms of money and human lives. Uh, but at this time, it's, it's a really a question of whether or not the United States is going to make a move, because Russia doesn't need to make one. So I, I think that it, it's in the, the U.S., the ball's in the U.S. court in order mm. to decide where this is going to go 
next. I think that there possibly is a diplomatic solution. Uh, simply acknowledge that these places have broken off and they're no longer uh, a part of the uh, of a part of Ukraine. Uh, they have chosen to leave after all. So uh, there is a, there is a very much a diplomatic, peaceful solution to this situation. Uh, but I think it relies on how much the U.S. is willing to put out in terms of effort to undermine Russian influence in the area and. That's a question that remains to be seen. Exactly. Many, many thanks. That's Mr. Jason Andrew, a political commentator out of Niagara Falls. I really appreciate your time.